Hi, this is Engineering Made Easy and I am Lalit Vasist. Today we will see the intrinsic and extrinsic semiconductors. These are the two types of semiconductors based on the adding of impurities. The pure form of a semiconductor is known as the intrinsic semiconductor but when we add some impurity to increase its conductivity so that it can be useful for uh, electronic devices we call it as the extrinsic semiconductor so here is given the classification of uh, semiconductors that is intrinsic and extrinsic semiconductors and uh, so first of all we will understand what are intrinsic semiconductors as i told you that uh, intrinsic semiconductors are the pure semiconductors let's now understand the concept of intrinsic semiconductors with the help of uh, energy band diagram here you can see this is the valence band and here is the conduction band this is the gap energy gap between these two bands okay this is known as the forbidden band so the electrons that are present in the outermost orbit of the atom are known as the valence electron the electrons of different atoms of the same shell have uh, slighter variations in energy so they form a group of energy which is known as band so the electrons of uh, different atoms that are in the valence shell form a band that is known as the valence band okay so we say that when any electron uh, gets energy external energy in the form of uh, thermal energy or uh, by applying external electric field then it breaks that covalent bond and it becomes free and now this uh, free electron can be used for the conduction process okay for electric conduction and we say according to this band theory that this electron has reached from the balance band to the conduction band now in the conduction band this electron can uh, easily uh, move uh, is free to conduct okay and while moving from the valence band to the conduction band it leaves a hole or we can say this hole is nothing but the vacancy of an electron so it leaves a hole in the valence band and uh, we get an electron that is free electron in the conduction band by breaking off this covalent bond okay so in intrinsic semiconductors also that is a pure form of semiconductor also we have some electrons that uh, can get enough energy due to thermal energy or uh, due to some external electric field that it can break the bond that the covalent bond and it becomes free and it moves into the conduction band but uh, the conductivity that uh, we can get with the intrinsic semiconductors is not useful for electronic devices so we need some mechanism so that we can uh, use it in uh, the electronic devices so we use the doping process so by the process of doping we get extrinsic semiconductors from the intrinsic semiconductors this diagram shows uh, an intrinsic semiconductor which has been connected externally by a voltage source okay v voltage source and you can see with the polarity of the voltage source then that the direction of electric field is in this direction towards left side okay since we know that uh, electrons are negatively charged and holes are positively charged so the force due to this electric field is in the opposite direction to the electric field on these electrons and uh, the force that uh, is exerted on these holes is in the direction of electric field since these are positively charged okay so the holes being positively charged are attracted towards the negative terminal of the battery and electrons are negatively charged so they feel attraction towards the positive terminal of the battery so what happens here that since the negative source negative terminal of the battery is the source of electrons so the electrons move to from the negative terminal of the battery and uh, since are attracted towards the negative terminal of the battery so they meet the recombination of electrons and holes takes place at this point okay and uh, not only this because of the attraction of uh, electrons towards the positive terminal of the battery okay these loosely uh, bound electrons uh, move from the semiconductor into the positive terminal of the battery and the movement and the breaking of the bonds of these electrons uh, creates more holes 
at the point B. And these holes that are created due to the breaking of bond move towards the terminal A. So when the electrons move uh, towards the positive terminal of the battery, they create more holes. And these holes, due to the effect of electric field, move towards the terminal A. Okay, and they are again they again recombine with the electrons that are uh, that that generate from the negative terminal of the battery at the terminal A. Okay, so this process takes place uh, in the circuit. Okay. So in this way, the flow of current takes place in uh, intrinsic semiconductors. So you can see that the total current is due to the electrons and holes both. Okay. So inside the semiconductor, the net current is due to the movement of holes and electrons since they are moving in uh, opposite directions, but they are of a different uh, charge. So the direction of current is same. Since electrons are moving in this direction, so because of these electrons, the direction of current is towards this, that is in the left side, towards the left side. And the holes being positively charged, because of these, the movement uh, of these holes is in the left direction. So the flow of current is in the left direction. So due to both of these uh, holes and electrons, the flow of current, direction of flow of current is towards left side, okay, in this side. Okay, so this is what happens when we apply external voltage source to the intrinsic semiconductor. Okay, but one more thing that in the external circuit, the flow of current is only due to the movement of electrons. Okay, the holes do not come out from the semiconductor. Okay, now we will see another form of uh, semiconductors. That is when we add impurities to the intrinsic, that is the pure semiconductors, they convert into extrinsic semiconductors. So what are extrinsic semiconductors? The conductivity of the intrinsic semiconductor is poor at the room temperature. Therefore, to make it more conductive and useful for electronic devices, small amount of impurity to the intrinsic semiconductor is added. Okay. And this process of deliberately adding impurity, that is knowingly we add some impurity to the intrinsic, that is a pure form of the semiconductor is known as the process of doping. This is, this process is known as doping. So how many electrons, how many, sorry, how many atoms are added uh, to the intrinsic semiconductor? Only one or two atoms of impurity is added for 10 to the power 6 intrinsic atoms okay this is a very small amount okay impurity is added in very less amount based on the type of impurities the extrinsic semiconductors can be classified into two types n type and p type n type semiconductors and p type semiconductors these n type semiconductors are the semiconductors uh, when we add pentavalent impurities okay pentavalent impurities means the atoms that have uh, five electrons in their valence valence shell okay so these that's why they are called pentavalent okay their valency is five and uh, trivalent impurities are the p-type semiconductors the impurities uh, having atoms that have uh, only three electrons in the valence shell that is the outermost shell having three electrons that's why it, its valency is three okay they are trivalent Okay, the examples of pentavalent impurities are P, A, S, S, B, etc. Phosphorus, arsenic and antimony. Okay, while the examples of trivalent impurities are aluminium and gallium etc. So now we will understand the n-type semiconductors. We will see its structure and how they are formed. Okay, so this is a phosphorus atom. Its valency is 5, so it is a pentavalent. We are discussing the n-type semiconductors. So it its outermost orbit, that is the valence shell, has five electrons. You can count it: one, two, three, four, and five. And this germanium is a, a, tri, uh, a tetravalent, that is, it has a valency of four. So the four electrons of this uh, phosphorus make covalent bonds with the four germanium atoms. Okay, but this atom is free electron this is not taking part in any bond formation so this electron is very loosely bound 
loosely bound to the atom so you can say that uh, for every impurity atom added we have uh, one extra electron if it is uh, n-type semiconductor okay so this in n-type semiconductors electrons are in majority while holes are in minority because uh, in intrinsic semiconductor we have equal number of electrons and holes but uh, after adding n type of semiconductors each impurity atom provides us with uh, one extra electron free electron that is loosely bound to the atom and it uh, increases the conductivity of the semiconductor in comparison to intrinsic semiconductor okay Therefore, in n-type semiconductors, electrons are in majority while the holes are in minority. So, this is the formation of covalent bonds in n-type semiconductor. Now, now, we will see the representation of charge in n-type semiconductor. Since we know that uh, any atom is neutral, okay, because it has equal number of positively charged protons and negatively charged electrons. Since uh, here you can see that... Uh, this phosphorus atom has uh, donated one electron so it becomes positively charged ion okay because of the lake of one negative charge so we represent it with the, in this uh, n type uh, semiconductor with a positive ion and with one electron this positively charged ion because of losing of one electron and this is its electron this is a free electron so this is the representation of uh, of uh, n type semiconductor now we will understand the p type semiconductors we have already discussed that p type semiconductors are formed when we add uh, some uh, trivalent um, impurities to the intrinsic that is the pure form of the semiconductor and we have seen that uh, some examples of uh, uh, p type semiconductors so let's take here the boron boron has uh, three valence electrons in its uh, outermost orbit okay so the three electrons can make bond with uh, only three germanium atoms but but the fourth germanium atom cannot make bond with this because it has only three bonds because it has only three electrons in its outermost orbit so one there is a vacancy for an electron for the bond formation with this germanium atom okay so this is called holes so hole is nothing but the vacancy or the desire of an electron at this place so you can see here that uh, each impurity atom provides one hole so the initially the intrinsic semiconductor has equal number of electrons and holes but after adding p type uh, impurity we get one hole per impurity atom so the holes are in majority while electrons are, are in minority in p type semiconductors okay this is the representation of charge carriers in p-type semiconductor as we know that uh, this is the hole that uh, that is the vacancy of an electron okay that we needed to form bond with the uh, germanium atom so it we represent it with a negative charge negative charge okay and with it uh, we uh, put put an hole so we represent it with a negative charge and a hole okay this uh, hole is mobile charge carrier it can move okay and while the acceptor ion are the immobile charge carriers these are the acceptor ions because they have uh, uh, gained one electron so their charge is negative okay and these cannot move in the ladders while the holes can move due to the movement of electrons when uh, any electron um, fills this uh, hole and they recombine then it creates a hole at some another place so we say that uh, the when the electron moves in one direction then we can we can say that the hole has moved from one place to another it has moved from the initial position to the position from where the electron has broken okay so in this case in this way the movement of holes takes place and the total current is due to the uh, movement of electrons and holes okay friends for more such videos you can uh, subscribe my channel engineering made easy and please don't forget to like and share the video if you liked it for more detailed information you can uh, visit my blog www.engineeringmadeeasypro.com its link is given in the description of this video you can check it and uh, See you soon in the next video. Till then, bye-bye.